Our next guest joining us from India is Ms. Nimisha Narendram. Ms. Nimisha, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Please proceed with your presentation. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. A very good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and honored colli uh, honored colleagues. I am Dr. K. Nimisha Narendran, final year MD scholar, Department of Kaya Chigilsa, Government Ayurveda College, Trivandrum, India. Today, I am here to embark on a case presentation which aims to explore the boundless potentials of Ayurveda and its endeavor. I am here to share a case report on Lafora progressive myoclonus epilepsy. So what is Lafora? Is it a rare disease? No, it is an ultra rare, most fatal autosomal recessive progressive myoclonus epilepsy called PME. Among the PMEs that we have, again, Lafora is unique. Why? Because of a rapid neurological deterioration of the patient with an adolescent onset. This disease is associated with high rates of consanguinity and mutation of two genes, EPM2A and 2B. Because of this genetic mutation, there is absence of two important protein molecules, lephorin and malin. These together form a complex structure involving glycogen synthesis. So in absence of these, the glycogen synthesis is impaired and there is accumulation of the aberrant glycogen molecules in the brain and the spinal cord. Now, this disease is new to me. It may be new to you, but Lafora had been in this globe for more than 110 years. Sir Rodriguez Gonzalo Lafora described the disease in the year 1911. This maestro of neurology, he found the accumulation of aberrant aberrant glycogen aggregates in the brain and the spinal cord. He named them as Lafora, which are the hallmark of the disease. Beginning in the late childhood and adolescent, this disease announces itself first by a seizure, followed by an evoked train of myoclonic jerk. Mostly the first symptom is mistaken as a simple epilepsy and it takes around nine months to two years to arrive at a correct diagnosis of Lafora. The clinical features include toniclonic seizures, myoclonic jerks, drop attacks, visual hallucinations. There is a progressive decline in the cognitive ability of the patient. They gradually develop dis Dysphagia, apraxia, they become cachectic and bed faster succumbing to recurrent infections. They die because of status epilepticus and aspirational pneumonia. This disease kills the patient in a duration of 10 years from the onset of its first symptom, and sadly, most of them do not cross their 25th birthday. Now, Lafora has been declared ultra rare by an organization so called NOD, since the prevalence is less than four cases per 1 million individuals. Majority of the cases reported are from Italy, Spain, and India. Coming to the treatment, there is no cure for Lafora. Very recently, it has been adopted in to the family of glycogen storage disease and metformin has been accepted as an, uh, as an orphan drug. There are mirage of strategies and researches going on, but they are still in the state of infancy. So coming to the case in brief, we have this 20-year-old female. She's born to consanguineous marriage. She was absolutely normal till the age of 16 years. She was having a normal scholastic performance. She was good at singing, dancing, and whatnot. At the age of 16, she gets this first episode of seizure, which was progressively worsening in nature. Earlier, it was once in three months. It became twice in a month, 10 times in a week. And then at the time of admission to the hospital, it was minimum 20 episodes of seizure per day. All the investigations, MRI, brain, EEG, uh, skin biopsy, and genetic testing confirmed her suffering from a Lafora body disease. Upon examination, we found the patient was drowsy but arousable. She was generally hypotonic and she could not apprehend the instructions given to her for the CNS examinations. And uh, upon Dashavida Priksha, we found the Vada Pradhana Tridosha affecting this patient in her Bali Avastha. Her Balang being Avaram, Sattva being Avaram, Abhyavarna Shakti, Jarana Shakti being Avaram, the Roga Bala being Pravaram is affecting all her Dhatu, Mala and Shrotas. Upon Ashtasthana Pariksha, we found the Nadi to be Vadigam. Her mutram avilam malam badham. She used to pass bowel once in only five to six days. Jiva obaliptam. The drik were bru nartanam. Akriti shina shushka deham and shabdam mukam and aspashtam. So, coming to the Ayurvedic perspective of understanding the disease, I would like to pin it under the category of Adibala pravrita vyadi as per Shushuta's classification because of the bija avayava dushti that is inherited from the patient. Looking upon the predominant uh, symptoms of seizure, it can be correlated to the apasmara. Considering the vegetative state of the patient, it can be related to the uh, shoshavastha. However, the samprapti begins with the bija bhaga aveva dushti of mamsa dhatu, causing dushti and shaya of uttar uttara dhatus by means of anulomak shaya. Because of this dhatu shaya, there is uh, vada aggravation. The turbulent vayu fans up the agni, makes it vishama agni, and the entire dhatu vyuha karana is disrupted because ama comes into action. Now, the entire samprapti, if compared to the modern, it shuttles back forth in neurometabolic pathway. So, to break the chain of samprapti, first thing we need to do is nidana parivarchan, that is to drive the public awareness to avoid the consanguine 
minus marriages. In Vyadhi Vyakta Avastha, we can do is Patinam, Ama Pajanam, Atni Dibanam, correction of Father in the order of Samanan and Apanan first, then Vyanan, Udanan, and Pranan, Ojo Vardhagam, Shodhanam, Rudu considering the Bala of the patient, and finally administration of Rasainam. So let's have a glance at the th uh, therapeutic intervention that we gave. Initially, for Vada Pitta Shamanam, Drakshadi Kashayam and Ashwagandha Arishtam was administered. Uh, parallelly, Talam with Panchagandha Churnam and Shirabala 101 Avarti, as well as Hastapada Abhyanga, which Shirabala 101 Avarti was given to the patient. These two procedures will be explained in the later slides. The diet was critically analyzed as we gave her Drakshadi Laja Peya, Mudga Yusham with Ashtra Churnam, Amalagi Swarasa and Tadima Swarasam was given at various times. Now to get rid of the Purana Mala, Shodhana was given, that is for the correction of Apana Vayu, uh, Pipalyadi Anuvas Navasti, Erenda Muladi Vasti, then Mustadi Raji Ap Navasti. Post Shodhana, a disease specific Kashaya Yoga, Balakanaga Patradi was opted. Along with that, Kalyanaga Gridham was given as a Shamana dose of Sneha Pana. In the second stage, Kushmana Surasa Gridham was given. We gave her um, Shirodhara with Shira Kashaya made up of Sapnya Sthapana Gana. Then uh, in the Brahmana stage, Kaya Segam was done with Lakshadi Telam and Bala Telam. Then after that, Mustadi Raji Ap Navasti was again given for the Shodhana. Jihwa Lebana with Kalyana Gavali Churnam and Saras with the was administered for the Vak Pravati. In the terminal stages, we gave her Dhana Nasi with Sapnya Sthavana Gana Churna, followed by Nasi with Purana Gridha, and lastly, Sanni Giri was administered to the patient. Now, after the entire Shamana and Chodhana Chigilsa, we opted Chavana Prasha as the Rasayana Dravya. In initially, we gave 5 grams of Chavana, Grasha, Chavana Prasha, which was gradually increased in the dose till the patient could cons uh, consume it as a Prasha Leha, uh, excluding the entire diet, one meal, one meal of the uh, of her diet. Now, I need not introduce Chavan Prasha to everyone because it's an integral part of every Indian's life. But the question is why Chavan Prasha was selected in this Lafora body disease is that the novel hallmark of Lafora includes the reactive glia derived neuroinflammation and the upregulation of TNF and IL-6. And there are research papers which prove that the Chavan Prasha uh, reduces the um, inflammatory cytokines and also reduce the transcript levels of IL-6 and TNF significantly. Another treatment, important treatment administered here is Vasti. One could find a plethora of scholarly articles on the effect of uh, vasti as well as shodhana on the gut microbiota. And they have already established that there is down regulation of the pro-inflammatory cytokines and ameliorating the helper T cells because of the shodhana and vasti. Again, I have quoted a few um, uh, uh, effects of the Rasayana because the diligent research is conducted by the eminent physician Dr. M. S. Valyathan sir. Uh, uh, they, the, it yielded sig in significant uh, insight, insights on the effect of Brahma Rasayana on the fly models. So it states that uh, this Rasayana has an important significant impact on the genetic integrity and suppressing the neurodegeneration. So the administration of Rasayana serves as an indispensable pillar augmenting the treatment efficacies then uh, by, by making a rejuvenation at that particular level. Now, uh, coming to this Karelia Ayurveda Chikilsa treatment uh, modality that is Talam, it is the application of two medium. One is lipid soluble and one churna medium at the uh, bregma portion of the uh, scalp. Now, the absorption takes place through the keratocytes. In, uh, through the shunting route, molecules are absorbed through the sweat glands and the sebaceous glands. And also, the drug molecules can also be diffused through the highly vascular havazine canals of the flat cranial bones. Over and above this, there is an uh, indeed intriguing fact that the, uh, uh, there is a resemblance between the two terms, talam and thalamus. The parallelism lies in the fascinating fact that talam is applied to stimulate the thalamus and the convergence between these uh, two terms reflect the uh, uh, connection between the uh, neurobiology. Another important treatment that we have here is Hastapada Abhyanga. This treatment a plan is intertwined to an important structure of the body and that is fascia, which is already forgotten. And the father of osteopathic medicine, he puts forward a concept of fascia as the probable matrix of life and death. So after the uh, Hastapada Abhyanga, there is a mechanical force generated which is converted into piezoelectric energy. So in that way, the sympathetic system para activities are suppressed, parasympathetic activities are uh, enhanced and after Hasta Abhinga, there is stimulation of the insular cortex. After Pada Abhinga, there is uh, stimulation of the cingulate cortex. So, in short, the Hasta Pada Abhinga, they bolster the autonomic nervous system. Coming to the discussion, the Chikilsa was attempted to correct the gut dysbiosis by Ama Pajana Pathya Sevana Agni Divana. The reinstating the brain homeostasis by blood brain barrier patchup. The uh, gut dysbiosis correction helps in inflammasome activation and reducing the lipid peroxidation. All the Shodhana and Shamana Kriyas that had included Snikta Dravya's were aimed to alter the blood-brain barrier permeability and for better drug absorption. 
the next question is what is the goal of the treatment now our aim was to address the frequency of these seizures which was 25 uh, times per day and it reduced to once or twice in a day after the treatment uh, got over so in that way we were able to control the disease activity and the patient started to eat properly she started to pass her bowel daily she started to respond to the stimulus she started to speak monosyllables in that way we were able to improve the quality of life to some extent we wish and hope to extend the disease free survival of the patient now we know that the disease is going to kill the patient in a duration of 10 years from the onset of his first symptom. So in that case, opting out is very easy. But the challenge is to give a try. Uh, this would help these patients live a life with improved quality with whatsoever life they are left out with. And this would spawn an unprecedented era of hope to the families amazing through difficult times. At the end, I would like to share the glimpse of this patient. A consent from the patient's mother was taken. This is one episode of myoclonic jerk that the patient got. She started to speak. Coming to the conclusion, I would now state Lafora as a ticking time bomb placed in a child's lap. For 99.99% of the population, the word Lafora may just mean a foreign locale or an exotic place or a, a drug species. But for these children, it is the worst nightmare. Seeing this young soul fade away is really cut cringing. Time is the essence for these children and every moment counts. I would like to end my presentation by placing on record a deep sense of gratitude to my department teachers for their constant support and guidance. I am very much thankful to the Institute of Traditional and Complementary Medicine, uh, Czech Republic, for providing me this online platform to be able to share this piece of knowledge with all of you. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, Ms. Narendram. Uh, do we have any questions here in the hall? No? No. Okay, so thank you very much, Ms. Narendram. Thank you, ma'am.